Welcome back, everybody, to the Friar Talk YouTube channel and podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about an article, actually a couple articles that came out about the Padres. Um, one of them was by, ooh, who was it? Isaac, you want to just go through the article real quick and just kind of break down everything? Because I know yeah, there was right. like two or three, right? Yeah, there was one by Kevin AC of the San Diego Union Tribune. There was another one by The Athletic. I didn't get to see who made that one, but assuming, you know, it's The Athletic, it could have been Dennis Lynn. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I think for everyone that read that article, they probably feel very strongly opinionated, just like I do. You saw a lot of things in that article pointing out to some of the flaws the parties have had really since the All-Star break, whether it's regarding team chemistry, um, issues with the players and, and the front office or – you know, just issues with the players in general. Um, one thing I want to point out, as much as we love Fernando, you know, I'm, I'd assume that for the Padres fan base, including myself, 70 to 80 percent of our favorite players are, you know, for us, mine's Fernando. I'd assume for 70 to 80 percent of other Padres fans, there's just Fernando as well. Um, so, of course, this is hard for us to say, for me to say at least, but I don't, I don't like what he's doing. Um, he's a 22 year old, so he still has time to mature, and he still has time to, you know, live, just be this, be a hum, like a superstar, but also a leader. And he's too young to be that right now. But at the same time, being too self, you know, being worried about yourself rather than what your team is doing, and be being angry at yourself over not being able to carry a team that also has the likes of Manny Machado, Jake Cronenworth, you know, last year successful Will Myers. Trent Grisham, like he, he should know he should he doesn't have to carry the load. Um, but that problem between Manny and Fernando, that had been brewing for weeks. And not just Manny, but there were supposedly players that had been that had been a little annoyed and even coaches that had been a little annoyed at um, kind of Fernando's disengagement or his anger with the direction of the team. Um, you could kind of attribute that to to not acquiring starting pitching, to trading Eric Hosmer for some reason. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's just dysfunctional. Everything right now is dysfunctional. You look at the article, you see that the players, it seems like they don't want to play for Jace Tingler. It seems like they, they, they're having a hard time respecting Jace Tingler. And I think we all knew that from the start. I think we all knew that that was going to be an issue. Um, when Chase and I originally had talked about it, I, I want to say Matt as well. I don't know if we were doing this yet, but – um, we had thought, what the heck are they doing? Like, how is this guy going to command respect from the likes of Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, Eric Hosmer, like guys that have, have good track records, you know? And they they took a gamble, and it didn't pay off. They're all they're all pretty angry with the, the way that it's going with Jace Tingler right now. You look at the rest of that article, you, t you see that whole situation with Fernando. Um, that had been brewing for weeks, and – we saw his attitude on the field. We saw how he was, you know, everyone was talking about something's wrong with Fernando. He looks sad. He looks this. He looks that. Well, it's very easy to see now throughout that article that he was just maybe embarrassed or frustrated with the direction of the team, that he wasn't winning because he knows the goals that were set for this year. He knows what was supposed to happen this year. And he's obviously disappointed in that outcome. But not only is he affecting himself because he's supposed to be the leader, the you know, the best player on this team, not only is he affecting his outcome with being in his head and worried about everything else going on around him rather than worrying about what he can control, but worrying about everything else regarding team direction and everything like that, I feel like it's hindered, maybe along with the injury, it's hindered him, his performance. And that's why we're starting to see, if, if you check the odds today, Bryce Harper is now the official favorite for the MVP award. And we had just recorded about that MVP award, and now it doesn't even seem like Fernando will win it. And if he doesn't win it, that's just a total failure of the season in general. You know, like he was favorite for a while. Sorry, Chase, I know I'm talking a lot. But, uh, you know, he was supposed to be the favorite for a while. And, and you know, obviously now he's just – his performance hasn't been exactly what it was. And I don't blame him. Like he's been injured and he's been fine. You know, what his performance has been, we take from the rest of the players in the bigs, maybe not named the Trouts, Otanis, Acuna, those kind of guys. But – Everything else, Eric Hosmer, seems like he was supposed to be a leader in the clubhouse. He's clearly not a leader the way he's, uh, you know, I feel like he's kind of torn apart this locker room, torn apart what was really good last year. You know, the relationships between everyone, 
And then further down in the article, they talk about potential, um, you know, new hirings for next year. But I think what that are, yeah, go for it. Um, I was just going to ask, what did the article say about Hosmer again? I briefly read over it, but what it, it was, said? It was, it was pretty much just saying that the team did not like that they were trying to get rid of Eric Hosmer. They didn't like that, that it was so sudden and, and uh, like they were, I feel like they knew that it was going to happen. Like it was bound to happen. If they didn't know it was bound to happen, then like they were clearly clueless about it. But if the fans knew that it was, it was bound to happen, like they were bound to shop Eric Cosmer, there's no way these players didn't know. And that's what it made it seem like. And Kevin AC made it seem like Eric Cosmer declined to speak in it. So, I mean, obviously uh, I, we have to take him for his word. But basically, they, they didn't like that they were trying to shop Hosmer. And, um, you know, for a team that wants to win, having a guy like that isn't beneficial. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, not really like, oh, Hosmer tore apart, but like the whole trade stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, the, it was like the deadline too, right? Like Frazier too. Yeah. And oh, even further down, you see that they were, they were frustrated they didn't get a starting pitcher. I think... Like I hate to say it, I think it's a weak mentality if you if you kind of think that oh you know we didn't get someone so now we're screwed. I, I that's what it made it seem like in the article, and of course I can't say that convincingly enough to 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 our listeners because I don't know that whole situation. But that's what the article made it seem like like they gave up after the deadline because they couldn't acquire anyone. Now, Chase, I'll let you talk in a second. I'm sorry again, <laughs> but um. We had been saying at the deadline or, or around the time at the deadline, us three have been saying that you're not only going to have to compete with the Dodgers on the field, but you will have to compete with them at the deadline. They beat us. Ever since then, they've swept us twice. Max Scherzer threw almost a perfect game against us, and there was a game I went to where he went eight shutout innings. Trey Turner now leads the league in hits, passing the guy that we traded for. You lost big time at the deadline. Even Jose Barrios did not have a good start with the with the twin with the Blue Jays. In his last five starts, after facing mechanical issues, has a two three eight ERA. You lost like big time, and it, it's showing. You could have used Marcano in the in the in a in a Max Scherzer trade. You didn't need Adam Frazier, and I, I think that's what the players thought too. So, I mean, that article just kind of showed a lot about this team. And, and the front office. Not sure. Yeah, I, it's one of those things where the front office went out and got a guy that they didn't need. You already had Cronenworth at second. And obviously the whole, hey, shopping Hosmer thing didn't work out. So you ended up with an extra player that it, it just doesn't fit with the clubhouse anymore. They're fighting for spots. And probably what, some of those guys would think, could deserve playing time over another probably Hosmer so you know that's going to split up the clubhouse a little bit further and then them just kind of not going out of the way to acquire starting pitcher kind of like as I said it is a weak mentality but when you look at it from the standpoint of this team has to watch Preller sign washed up veterans that get cut for their teams for underperforming significantly kind of get where they're coming from jake arietta yesterday got pulled in the first inning after letting up five runs vince velasquez absolutely rocked i mean you have you setting out this amazing team and then you're like you know what we don't have starting pitching let's go ahead and, and sign these washed up veterans that probably don't deserve the second chance that they do right now especially for a team that's trying to make a playoff run instead of promoting our talent within that probably gives us a way better shot of winning just because why we, we don't know the answer to that. Martinez is booting doing in triple a the last couple starts. Gore has finally fixed himself and coming around. There's Ethan Elliott. There's got, there's a couple of other guys you can throw there. There's Reese Kinnear and you guys don't give them these opportunities to succeed. And you're just setting the team up for failure and just kind of letting them take their frustrations out on each other. If I'm if I'm a player on the Padres and we have a chance at playoffs, and the front office is wa- signing up these washed up pitchers that are getting rocked in the first inning and giving us no shot to win, I'd be pretty upset with the front office too. And I think another part of the whole front office also angering parts of me is 
it seems like there's no separation from manager and Preller. We, uh, Jim Russell during one of the live streams said, Preller and Tingler are one mind. And that is true. When you don't think you can trust your manager to have your back and side with the front office instead of the players, I think that also causes a divide where, yeah, the players don't trust the manager. The manager hasn't been making good decisions. He's getting outmanaged in nearly every game he plays against. And the front office is putting these guys out there. It's, you're just creating a giant rift that is going to be very hard to mend. And it's one of those things where if they make the playoffs, wow, that's going to be great. How far are they going to go? Probably not far. So real quick, I have both the articles up right here next to me. Um, the one by Kevin Acey is for the UT, of course, uh, Union Tribune in San Diego. Um, the other article that I have is by Sam Fells, and that is by that is on Deadspin. So I'll attach both those. I'll link them in the description, by the way. Um, so if you guys have been listening this whole time about this article, and you're like, what the hell is this article? I haven't linked. But the the title for Kevin Acey's article is, let me see, Padres problems seem destined to lead to changes. So Kevin Acey thinks that people are going to be fired after this, which is, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. That's like one of the main reporters. And if Dennis Lynn, because I know that there is an athletic one, I'm assuming it's Dennis Lynn. If Dennis Lynn wrote that and he's writing the same thing, he's been pretty plugged in. Now he did get the Scherzer stuff kind of wrong, but I think he just felt it was officially reported similar to what we did as well. So not really going to knock him on that. He's just, he just thought it was done. (coughs) As far as how this stuff goes, like, I think it's – I get why they're frustrated. I get why Fernando's frustrated. I think that anyone that's trying to knock Manny for, like, being a bad leader, like an aggressive leader, like, I don't know, like, about you you two, but if you play, like, football growing up and you have, like, a hard-ass coach, that's, like, nothing. Even Like, that's not even bad. And that's not, like – I'm not saying that's, like, the way to do it, but Manny getting in his face in a – in a professional sport to me, isn't surprising at all. I think that happens behind closed doors all the time. And if it happens in the dugout and it's a big blow up, don't really think it matters. Tatis has talked about in the past that he likes that Manny does that, that Manny goes and checks him because Manny goes and puts him in place. And if people are saying, oh, well, Manny used to be like that, that's exactly why Manny's trying to help out Tatis. That's exactly the reason for that. So I applaud Manny for going out there and doing something that it's going to be bad publicity. But I don't really think that either of them care about that at all. And I don't think they should. The fact that all these things are coming out now, it is interesting timing. I would say, Oh, there's a big blow up in the dugout. And now all of this stuff leaks out. That is a little odd. I think a lot of people have just been wanting to talk about the potential of him being fired. So we'll see, you know, how it goes, but concerns. I mean, I definitely think you guys are right now. I didn't really like any of the other trades that some of the other teams made for starting pitchers, but I felt like the Padres could have competed with the Dodgers. We made a video about them trading Ryan Weathers and people did not like that idea at all. But if they would have traded Ryan Weathers, look at where they'd be at now. And I know that's like, okay, like that's the guy that's a future piece. We all three still believe in him, but if you would have got Max Scherzer and Max Scherzer would have been doing what he's been doing, this season would look a lot different. Oh, also Trey Turner add him in there as well. <laughs> because the Padres would have been able to send more than what the Dodgers did. Um, I just saw that some people think that the, that Scherzer vetoed the trade. I don't know like where that's coming from. I don't, I don't think that's the case. It's pretty rare that players will veto trades to contending teams. That's like very, very odd. Like the whole, like you control your own spot more of it as like, you don't, you're not going to get put in a terrible situation. Like, if he's like, hey, we're going to trade you to Pittsburgh, he's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to Pittsburgh. Now, obviously, that's making sense, but that's usually the purpose for no trade clauses. They're not going to be like, oh, we're going to send you to a contending team. He's going to be like, yeah, no, because he wants to contend. I, I think that was pretty clear. Um, and he's done that. Sure, there's been an absurd, one of the best trade land accusations in a long, long time. So it's definitely got to be frustrating for all these guys. And I think that this stuff leaking – Either it kind of shows everybody like, okay, this is what's going down. Maybe it's not true, but there's going to be questions when you have a season that's this disappointing. So either way, 
I think it's just trying to shed light to like some of the problems that are happening. So interesting. You guys read it for yourself. You know, let us know what you think. If you guys think it's like, I don't know. I, I think like most of it's more about like just talking about what they like stuff that you could kind of see, like you saw this unfolding, you see the struggles, you see the frustration. A lot of it's based on that. So I think it's just kind of what we've seen, but that's all I have. Do you guys have anything else? Yeah, going back to that Fernando Manny situation, we all still love Fernando. We all know that he's going to mature and all, all that's going to, you know, that's all going to resolve itself. We saw the very next day Fernando and Manny kind of getting along in the dugout. So obviously it was no big deal. Like Matt said, um, Fernando appreciates that stuff. And that's kind of just going to be growing pains of a superstar who, you know, just got pretty much immediately in the limelight. He was immediately in the spotlight of the MLB being labeled as the face of baseball. It's just going to be growing pains of maturity and all that stuff. And, Obviously, he's an amazing player, but, um, you know, all, all that, all of this stuff's going to come along when he's really in his prime, 25 through 30. Um, but there's nothing to be worried about that fight. Manny was absolutely in the right. For all we know, if if he doesn't check him right there, because I saw people saying that that could have happened behind the scenes, like he could have saved it. But if he doesn't check him right there, it's a very good possibility your best player is out of the game. He might get tossed. Yeah, I mean, that eruption in the dugout slamming his helmet – a lot of umpires don't tolerate that. I mean, me, I saw one time one of my teammates broke his helmet. He got tossed, and that was in the dugout. So um, that, that that kind of stuff. Is that Chase? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I was there. It wasn't me, though. <laughs> Chase Chase was super calm. So, <laughs> but, uh, There's only like just one goes time in and breaks so his back. My glove and stuff. Yeah, There's like one I mean, time where I threw my glove. That's it. Yeah, so I mean – that, that, that kind of stuff gets you tossed and you don't want to lose your best player in a situation where, you know, you're going up against a team that is right in the thick of things with you. So that absolutely had to happen on spot. And obviously it didn't cause a rift between the two. So that's, that's a great thing. Um, but regarding the rest of the article, I think what we can conclude from it, Jace Tingler, most likely gone. Um, Eric Hosmer, we don't, I like, I really don't know what to make of that situation. If the players didn't want him gone, he very well may still be with this team next year. But if the players want to win a World Series, that is not a player you can afford to have on your team. Like, I'm sorry. I I, I know you can say one player doesn't affect that that much, but Eric Hosmer does. Like, his defense, his at-bats, yeah, go for it. I was going to say, I think the one thing that we don't realize is look at him compared – don't look at him compared to just average baseball players. Look at him compared to other first basemen because first basemen don't put up the negative defensive wars and negative outs above average at the level that he does. And his slugging numbers for first base, because you like, let's look at Cronenworth, for example, because he's in kind of like the opposite kind of spot. Cronenworth's numbers aren't like, if you compare him to like all the baseball players, it's not like crazy. But when you compare him to second baseman and you add in how great of a defender he is there, he's he's a top player. He should be the starter in the all-star game, right? Hosmer is like bottom, bottom tier of first base. So you got to look at him compared to other first basemen. There was, I don't know if it was this article, but there was one where he was talking about, uh, I think it was, it, I think it was, I don't know if it was this one about Nelson Cruz being a first yes. potential first baseman. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I just was, I was reading a lot of Padre stuff today. Um, and so he was talking about like, Oh, what if he was there? And Nelson Cruz has been known to be like a terrible defensive player, but Hosmer was that bad. Where like Nelson Cruz's bat, even if he's had his worst defense than Hosmer, is going to make up for it because Nelson Cruz is going out there, and if he's healthy, he's hitting forty bombs at forty years old. So that's the big difference there. And I think that that's the thing that like you got to compare him to the other players at the position because that makes such a big difference. But that's all I got to say. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And uh, hold on. So. I don't know if he's for sure a free agent next year, but I brought it up. Uh, was I lagging right now? No? Am I good? Okay. I brought it up to Chase a little earlier. I like CJ Crone if he's available next year. Uh, 27 bombs. I, I honestly think what this team is significantly lacking, and we brought this up on the podcast last year, is that you can't be too reliant on the long ball. We saw last year how reliant they were on it. Um, this year, their slugging is awful. Hosmer, under 15 home runs. Myers, I believe, is under 15 home runs. Grisham is definitely, I believe, under 15 home runs. Fam might have reached it yesterday. 
Nola has one. Caratini might have five. Frazier has like what zero with us. So slugging is definitely down across the board on this team, unless your name is Manny Fernando. Myers has 17. Don't slander him. Wow. Okay, well, for Myers, I expect like 25, 30. Well, ha- so- he still has over a 780 OPS. <laughs> Chase does not accept the Myers slander. Um, but honestly, Chase, like I think – I think he's gone. I think maybe not him. To me, it's either one of him or or Hosmer. I per, obviously prefer Hosmer, but as I was saying, slugging across the board is down, and and that's I feel like that's costing this team a lot of games, considering the the state of the MLB game at at, uh, at this point. You know, a lot of it's about launch angle, exit velocity, stuff like that, and you know, this team across the board is just not not producing that high level of slugging. And uh, that's why I bring up guys, CJ Crone. Um, I don't know what outfield options are available next year. You know, Tommy Pham is probably going to be gone. So it's going to be a left field spot that needs to be filled. Um, other than that, though, don't know what they're going to do with Hosmer. Obviously, they like him as players, but he's just not a World Series caliber player. Regarding, regarding an experienced manager, we brought up Washington. Um, I don't know what other options there will be, but considering the state of what Preller has done, Will Venable might be an option because I don't know why Preller likes having so much control over over this kind of stuff. It's really weird, but it seems like he wants a rookie manager, and I don't know if he'll go out of his way to make something else happen. A lot, I see a lot of people bring up Bochi. Um, the thing about that is Preller would have to have to cede a lot of responsibility to get Bochi. Bochi's not going to come back to a situation where he doesn't have full control. That's just like I, I find that very hard to think he'll do that. So that's what I took out of that article, though. It, it was a very concerning thing to read, but it, it's good that we got clarity. Chase, anything else you want to add, or are you all good? Sorry for the long pause, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's going to do it for today. This is kind of a long one, but a lot to talk about. I think just like some of the – some of the fundamental flaws we talked about that in the live stream a few days ago, um, and we'll be talking about this stuff throughout the offseason and whatnot. I think when the offseason starts, we're going to go through like, all right, how to fix like you know a big series on like how to fix the Padres, where we just go through like all the different moves that we really like, and then at the end it's like, all right, here's this team. Um, but I think that's going to do it for today. Me and Chase are going to be going live tomorrow, uh, six thirty, and then this is coming, or I guess tonight because this is coming out uh, Tuesday morning. Um, <coughs> And then that's it. So we're going to be talking about Preller a little bit too. And then on, I know on fr- no Saturday, Saturday we're going to do like an updated playoff chances episode because that's the next time us three will be all together. Um, but that's going to do it for today. Thank you all for listening. Um, very long show. Not the the most like hurrah show. Not kind of just sad and gloomy. But fortunately, that's the, that's the state and that's what kind of this article was talking about. So Hopefully you guys like the video. Uh, we'll be talking, updating on anything else that we kind of hear about this stuff. Um, and hopefully the Padres, I mean, they're still only two and a half games out. I don't think our expectations are huge. Miracles happen. Hopefully it happens now. But that's going to do it for today. So thank you all for listening, and we'll talk.